This video is going to show you solo master nightfall getting plant and rank and how showing you how to solo farm the nightfall this week as there's double vanguard rank on. So all vanguard rank points are earned and doubled. So this is just basically showing you how to farm it, you know, ascended shards, exotics, you know, just to farm the nightfall. You can do this team, solo, whatever you want. This isn't a solo GM, of course. I'll get round to doing that. So we've got all week, so I'll start having a look at the GM, but for now, start off slow, do a master and then build from there. So the modifiers are Fire Pit. When Acolytes defeated, they spawn a Fire Pit. Champions are Barrier and Sockball. Equipment locked. Match game. Shields are on, which is Arc and Solar. Chaff Radar is disabled. Champions mob. As I said, Arc and Solar. Weight of Weakness. This is a daily modifier which may change for you. It could be Subtle Foes, Weight of Weakness, and Pole Arm. Those are the three rotating daily modifiers. So if you don't like this modifier, do it on another day. It's, it's not too bad, this. Uh, as I said, double vanguard. Acute arc burn is on. Right. This is on GMs and masters. So we need to play into that arc damage for us for 25%. For the enemy, 50%. So we're going to account for that. So we're using a void walker, heal and rift. Void X grenade. Aspects are chaos accelerant. Feed the void. Fragments are echo of undermining. Remnants. Expulsion. We are using a controverse hold build with 100% discipline. Double ashes to assets, shield break charge on the helmet, uh, armor piece and for the bow, unstoppable hand cannon, high energy fire shield break, they coincide with each other. Double firma classic resistance, two of them. With an elemental ordnance, we can get wells. Argent ordnance, which is a de uh, buff for rockets, rocket launcher scavenger noise. Elemental charge, loosen finisher, and a bomber. Um, that's just me quickly covering it, there'll be more information in the run itself. As for the weapons, we're using a hand cannon. Any hand cannon will do. Yeah, I'm just trying out this judgment. Then we've got Wolf Tone Draw. This is exceptional for this. I highly recommend you a shoot to loot weapon, whether it be scout or or um, bow, whatever you want. Uh, and then we're using Galley. You can use Sleeper Simulant. That will be uh, really good. A Solar Legendary Linear will be really good. Ascendancy will be okay, I guess. Probably Galley will be better. Uh, but that's just what we were using uh, on the run. So as we start the run, we're going to run past the initial ads. A arc shielded knight and a couple of acolytes. Just run past them. You don't need to take them out. This run will get you'll net you the 100k pinnacle score if you're still leveling up. Uh, I imagine... I mean, you'd be surprised. A lot of people get bumped on pinnacles, so they may be still doing pinnacles. Um, so you'll get your 100k pinnacle from doing this. As I said, you can do it in a team with the strategies I'm going to show you, uh, especially when you get to the boss fight. Or you can do it solo like this, but if you're going to do it solo, I would highly recommend a Warlock. Maybe even a Hunter. Hunter's going to be really good for this one, uh, just when you get to the player section. So this initial section here, you want to concentrate on taking out the Acolytes before they de -aggro. They're wanting to de and go to where the champion is. Right, they want to surround the champ. So try and take them out as quickly as possible. Use your arc boy one shots them. As long as you get uh, your critical hit, you'll one shot adds with this buff. Um, because it's buffed. It's buffed with, obviously, got Frenzy on it, but it's also got uh, the 25% damage bonus from the Nightfall. Which is why I'm mainly using it, and there's a bunch of arc shields. We use a rocket with a grenade, and then we're going to fill back up an hour heavy. We have unlimited power ammo this season. I think people are sort of missing the point. We lose some finisher. It works on champs. It doesn't just work on uh, the guardians. I think some people are just using it for light blade and forgetting about it. No, you no, no. Use it on all nightfalls. It's unlimited heavy. Obviously, you've got to put in a bit, bit of work when you're solo. You're gonna, you know, make sure you're getting those finishes when you do, right? But as long as you know when to push the champ, you know, clear all the ads first, then you're good. As we start here, there's the left and right tower. You want to spawn kill one of the champs. I pick right. That's just what I always do. It doesn't really matter. As long as you spawn kill one of them, you're good. Which you lead with the nade and the rocket. Uh, and that basically does everything for you. That's why we kind of went at Gali. Because this run's meant to be an ease of, ac an ease of access for people. Like weapon wise. You know, we're not using any raid weapons. We're not using anything that, that you can't get. If... Um, you can even use the Adaptive Munitions Scout if you want to do that. 
with the shoot you can put shoot to loot on that on that scout uh, i highly recommend shoot to loot for this uh it's not required but the shoot to loot helps out when you get to the boss fight like huge until then though i'm not really utilizing shoot to loot it's not something i you know i just spend time trying to shoot a brick no i just go and pick it up if it's close to me I just go and pick it up you know uh, I only utilize shooter loot when you know I can't have access to that heavy brick. We'll spawn kill the wizard. That then spawns in another champion. Drop the orb. Forget about the orb. Clear out all the acolytes. Two or three acolytes spawn in with the champ, of course. Uh, I'm just wanting to see where this champ's going. He's backing right up. The champ likes to back up where you dunk the orb, obviously. So um, I wouldn't recommend dunking the orb unless you're on a hunter. We use a super here, we missed our grenade. That's fine though, we'll get a shield break. The thing is with bow, bows, a love hate thing for me, for barriers. They do really good damage, like whether it be adaptive munitions, explosive head, whatever it is, that's not my point. The point is if you, if you like miss your shot or you miss time your shot, the barrier will start regen straight away. Because it's not like a scout rifle where the scouts, you know, continuously shoot. Cause it's got a, a mag, a bow is a bow. That one shot, you miss it, the barrier regens. And it's more noticeable on GMs. When you're using bow for barrier, it's not the best. Le Monarch's different because it's poison. Taiku's different because it's got its exotic uh, perks going on. That synergizes with the barrier. But a standard, your standard bows aren't the best for barrier. You really need to concentrate when you're taking... Barrier shields with legendary um, bows. Not to say that they're not usable, they are. They're great. You can one shot them. You just need to time out that shield. Like You need to be ADS'd with your sh bow ready for that shield. Not be mid bowing him and then when he puts his shield up, you don't have your bow knocked ready to shoot him. So that's, the, that's the thing that you need to learn if you're going to do the bow. Arbalist wouldn't be a bad idea as well. If you wanted to run Arbalist, you could I could could have went the double linear route. So Arbalist with a solo linear and then an arc bow would work out really well. I, I highly recommend an arc bow because there's so many arc shields in the whole thing. There's a couple of solo, obviously all the solo shields are, are the wizards, which if you're not using a, a weapon like Lemon Arc, then you really need solar on as well. You really do need the solar and the arc. The void nades will help you penetrate Brute force. You can brute force these shields, obviously, on master. Depending on your power, of course. You can brute force them down. So what I'm doing here is, for the second orb, you can jump up on the tower like this. Which I'm just going to do. Um, I'm managing my heavy at all times. Notice, I can see there's a brick in front of me. I'm just going to use heavy here. I'll get the shield break. Could go for another finisher, but I, I, it's not required for me, so I'm good. The orb's despawned, that's fine. So we'll go back for the orb. <laughs> Pretty uh, basic, there's a lot of, with Scarlet Keep, this will be this very similar for GM. Uh, everything's pretty straightforward, you take everything from range. Um, the thing that you need to be uh, sort of weary of, like any GM is snipers always. They do void though, <laughs> that's the thing. They do void and, and this Snipefall's main worries is arc, so. The Boomer Knights and the Wizards can melt fast. So you just have to be aware of that. You've got the Curse for all. Don't dunk until you take out the Curse. That's probably a bit, you're better off doing that. Unless you, you, you've got a, a gap to do the, the, the dunk. Okay, now obviously we've got Unstoppable Barriers. Uh, not Unstoppable Barriers. We've got Unstoppable and Arc Shields. So I'll have a nade ready. We'll deal with what's in front of us first. Don't try and like... Um, Try and get all the Thrall at least, and then if you see a gap, I would just take the Knights first, like I'm doing. But it's not the biggest of deals, because that's why I'm running a weapon like Galix, it's just easy use. We'll try one rocket, see what damage that does. That's actually really good, one rocket per champ. So that the ammo economy on a rocket... For Master, at least, he's really good. For GM, a little bit different. You may want to um, utilize, I would say, linears. Because the ammo goes further and you need more ammo to deal with all the champs. Obviously, uh, you know, we'll look at doing the GM solo 100%. Um, 
But for now, as I say, for for the farm, Gally's just a little bit better, just in terms of easy use at the boss fight, being able to burst stuff down. You've got infinite ammo, don't forget. Providing you put loose and finish it on. We'll push a little bit here because we've got Devour. So, you know, I don't need to sit back too much. A couple of these are snipers, so just be careful. This little uh, encounter, you'll get two solo wizards. So what I like to do is spawn, kill the initial set of adds here. Come back just a little bit because these wizards can melt. We have a master GM. It doesn't really matter because um, what I mean by that is you just need to avoid their fire at all costs, no matter what mode you're on, just because of the EQ burn. Now, I don't know why, but I was under the impression on GMs the EQ burns weren't going to be on. So I'm a little confused. No one's mentioned this. Like they said in the TWAB. I mean, I'm not going to look it up right now because I can't bother to do that. But I'm sure I remember they said we are only going to have acute burns for hero, legend. Well, all the way to master. All night falls up to master and then GM will be excluded because they believed it would be too harsh or something. Uh, and they're on. Acute burn is on GMs. Is this a bug? Does anyone know? Like, why is that? I, the day one when it come out, I was just very confused with that, because what that means on all nightfalls, you need to play to the burn, preferably the heavy um, or, or or an energy weapon, uh, and your kinetic weapon should be generally um, like arbalist, like wither horde, osteo, exotics like that, you know. Um, Whereas you need to, as I say, you need to match up in energy or, or even both in team runs. You can obviously do both if you want. Just depends on the GM. We're going to um, open the Shrieker up. The Shrieker opens up when you get to this little whatever object you call this. When I get close to that, you want to Galahorn the um, rocket, the Shrieker. Then you're safe to take the barrier. <laughs> this is our safe area if you like. So here's the thing on, on this with the wolf tone. It will one shot the shield on this difficulty, providing I get a crit behind the, you know, on the on on the uh body itself. If it's a body shot, it's two shot. That's because um that it, it's a high impact type style bow and the fact that arc burns on. Two snipers here, so we'll take these. There's a solar wizard, just so just be careful. This uh sniper's uh, I don't know what's happened with that. But now what I'm going to do... I just have to be careful there because there's three snipers. And the wizard. So your priority really is... Take your time, get the wizard. Obviously you need to use the rocket. Don't bother trying to take... You know, the shield without... I tried adaptive munition. I've done a couple of runs. Okay, so this isn't the only run that I've done. I've done a couple of runs testing different loadouts. I won't, you know, tell you everything. But, um, you know, because I do, do, I do some sort of tests that I don't really... I don't... There's tests I do that I don't tell everybody because then people get, the, my, you know, my ideas sort of thing. So, I've done a couple of runs. i tried Adaptive Munitions, for example. So, Adaptive Munitions... I haven't played with it because it was all hype. Is it that good of a perk, really? I don't think so. I think because of the acute burn on all the knife falls, you just use the you just use the right weapons. You know? It's not the biggest of deals to just say, right, never mind adaptive munitions. Just put on the right burn weapons. Like I've got all the weapons you can imagine, arcs all avoid of like a pulse or a rifle bow. That's that's the way you just play. You know, in this game, you need to make sure that you're always getting the burns for each weapon. So you need to look at all the loot pool each season. Look at all the weapons that's up and make sure that you're getting them, the roles that you want, farming them, umbral focusing them, whatever you need to do. I have been doing that. Obviously, that's something you, you know you just do all the time. What I'm doing here is I'm not capturing any plate, notice, because the wizard isn't tied to the plate. So there's, t there's two different adds waves going on here. There's the uh, distance adds, we'll call it. So... When I, mean, when I mean about distance, when you're within a room, say, say you're 40, you push up 40% in that room, 
that's there's like a line if you like a line in the sand where the ads they spawn up right there's those ads and then there's the ads that are controlled via the plates they spawn obviously differently now the the um you'll get a barrier per plate so you'll get a barrier you'll get three barriers in this room but uh what you want to do is take as i say one plate at a time try and take out the ads while you've got devoured of course uh, we're going to use the stairs to head glitch, the t not head glitch, but sort of have cover. The body won't hit us so much. Look, he's just hitting the floor in front of us. So we're using the environment to our advantage. I'm going to get a finisher kill on him. This room you want to start to sort of, because there's three wizards to take, because there's three champs, you want to start utilizing a couple of finishers because we're on galley. So we need, you know, we need to be using that. Um... To, to maintain our ammo because our goal is to get this room done at a speedy manner you know not speed running it but you know not take them forever uh, and also maintaining a, a healthy amount of ammo for the next cycle that that's the main goal with this the two snipers have spawned so before before i even take another plate this will help us further, further on because if you spawn in another barrier you've got two snipers sniping you while you deal with the barrier, which is not ideal. We'll spawn kill these acolytes here. Which they spawn from the two doors, you notice. That's the only spawns with the barriers. So it's, just f it's not that dangerous. And the spawns that you're seeing here is the same for Grandmaster. So, you know, just if you're unsure with Scarlet Keep, which some people are, because the season that Scarlet Keep came out, I think it was the... I don't know if it was the first, no, it wasn't the first Conqueror that ever was out. It might have been the second or whatever. A lot of people didn't play that season because uh, you couldn't guild your Conqueror. I think it was the second or the third. It might have been the second, I can't remember. But a lot of people didn't, I, to be honest with you, I didn't. That particular season, if anyone can remember the rotation with Scarlet Keep was first up, put it down in the comments. I can't mind, but uh, I didn't play it. I wasn't actually, I actually kind of mini stopped playing Destiny for a little bit. Just because I, 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 I kind of found it dumb. The fact that uh, the Conqueror wasn't a different name. Like I thought, well, what's the point in having two Conquerors? But that was before we could guild uh, seals. Now it makes a little bit more sense. But back then it didn't. It's like, well, I can just obtain Conqueror again. Uh, I wasn't interested. But as I said, since then they've gilded them. So now it makes sense. Um, but if you didn't play that season, you wanna miss it out. You wanna miss out on a guild because you couldn't guild it anyways. So there, there was no penalty for missing that season, is what I'm trying to say. But that's why I'm saying a lot of people don't aren't familiar with Scarlet Key because uh, they didn't they didn't play the GMs that season. So that's the plate room done. As you can see, I'm taking each plate slowly. All the ads are coordinated. If I am standing on a plate, make sure I've got a devour chain going. If I haven't got a devour chain going, you back up. Because you can play it as slow as you want. You, you don't even need to capture the plate. You can actually just step on plate, step off, take all the ads with your bow, and then go from there. There's four acolytes here. Um, two of them are snipers. There's one on the hill and then one up top. Take those out as soon as you can before you deal with barrier, always. Don't try and be melting the barrier while the snipers are up, obviously. These acolytes are dangerous because they do solar nades. Uh, they can melt you, these, these acolytes. So just, just be careful with the nades. So the barrier is backed all the way. He's de -aggroed. Why is he doing that? Well, because there's no ads alive. That's what the barrier does. They, well, that's what champions do. When there's ads, ads alive, they are more confident. So we'll use a, a Nova here. Notice what, what happened with the Nova. The Nova, because I was so close to the champ, it didn't spawn the additional Seekers. Because of how Cataclysm Nova works, the, 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 more, the further it travels, the more likely it is to do the uh, Seekers. But that was fine. It worked in our favor. I've actually spawned, I've actually um, loose and finished that uh, champ. So if I really wanted to, I could actually go back for that brick. The brick won't despawn or nothing like that, so I can go back. But I don't end up doing that. Cause it's, it, I end up just getting the bricks anyways, because I'm double prime heavy, uh, double prime heavy, which gives an increased uh, chance at heavy regardless, because no special bricks are dropping, and no white bricks are dropping, because it's infinite ammo now, of course. So it's a win-win. You're always getting the heavy. 
Here I'm going to try and spawn kill as many snipers on the on this hill area as possible before we deal with the barrier. The barrier is going to back up. It's the same thing. The barrier is less confident, so he backs up to where the shrieker is. So don't take the barrier just yet. Take all the uh, adds. Acolytes uh, are the priority. Which that's what makes a bow so good in this because, um, you know, you one shot most of the adds. And you, you're able to play from range. We'll use a bit of heavy for this. Just get rid of this champ because I don't want to finish the champ because what will happen is the shrieker will open up as I finish the champ. Therefore, giving us a risk of dying. So that champ, I wouldn't recommend finishing unless you've got the Shrieker down already. This barrier also backs up. Um, but here's the thing about this. Don't push up any further than those two pillars in front of me because... Um, or this ramp area. Once you push up, you spawn in another barrier. What will happen then is that initial barrier, if you haven't killed him, he'll back up to the other barrier and then you'll have two barriers to take out together. Which is ideally what you don't want, so that, that's very subtle, but you've got to make sure you take out the barrier before you proceed up the ramp. We'll um, spawn kill a lot of these acolytes with our grenade, because of how Vortex works, it'll drag them all in. So, essentially Vortex got a buff. Uh, when Void Free, don't, I mean, if it wasn't already extremely good for solo play, it's now even better. Because of how the Void Free works. I, I was actually surprised when it come out. I thought they would maybe slightly nerf Controversal. Which they kind of did slightly nerf it. But slightly buff it at the same time. Which is a weird uh, situation. But overall it's it's buffed. What I'm looking to do here is look for an opening. There's, there's closed doors and opening doors. Noise. What I'm going to do is hide behind one of the red pillars on the, on the elevator. Then throw my nade at the opening door to proc devour jump in the door you then can cheese mini cheese the elevator if you like um it just means that you don't need to deal with the acolytes that's what it means so i can stand here and then we'll get journalized that will then safely teleport you up top to the next level there's three levels of this tower so we'll do that each time i don't i don't regard it as a cheese sort of thing just as a mini exploit that i don't mind using because if I don't do that, I'm going to be killing them anyways. I will just do a devour chain. So I'm just here to show you the, you know, the additional strats that you can do. What my goal here is, is to spawn kill this champ on the on the left. Because there's, there's a champ that spawns left and right. So you need to decide early on which side you're taking. Because if you don't, if you clear all the acolytes and don't clear the barrier, the barrier, both barriers will go middle where the wizard is so you're gonna have a wizard and two barriers to deal with which isn't ideal whereas if it's just one barrier one wizard it makes all that difference just that little bit of difference so what i'm doing here is is, is just seeing if i could maybe take the barrier before the wizard it works out that's not the case because the way these wizards work they they push so let's take advantage of that and just melt the wizard down first so we'll um lead with a grenade and then one rocket Shield break charge works really good. The high energy fire um, shield break charge, which I haven't really talked about too much, works out really good. Uh, not only that, I know it doesn't stack with Argent Ordnance, but it's just another way of me getting a buff for the rocket. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's just another way of getting the buff. I, I realize they don't um, buff in that way, but it's just two different ways. And to be honest, I was struggling for a sort of setup. Because I have everything uh, available on this setup, I used to assets, corner vessel, I've got all the grains I need. I haven't got any void weapons on. Could have used font of wisdom, stuff like that. But in in the end, it doesn't matter so much. The the corner vessel is is really all you need. Put galley on. You don't even need a build. As long as you got high stat armor, that's the thing that I. On a warlock, you always want to look for recovery, discipline. Always, never intellect. I don't know. I don't care who you are. Somebody who thinks the intellect's good, it's not. PVE, well, irradiance, no. You want dis discipline, recovery, discipline, recovery. Even resilience now is a really good start. Like over T4, T4, T5, T6 for GMs and stuff. That's really good on a warlock. If you can have high recov, high discipline with a T6 resilience for GM solo stuff, that's exceptional. Having a high intellect. Because of the rework to intellect, it doesn't 
work like you like it used to okay so it, it isn't beneficial to you because you can just shoot a champ you get all the super you need okay so you, you, super is linked to damage that you deal and damage you take in pve so intellect is now a pvp stat so when you're building your character out even if it's ursa furiosa like yesterday i was using my titan for five of the gms we done i mean my team i didn't rock intellect it was all resilience reek of discipline intellect was not needed and i was getting plenty of banners more than what more than enough so that's just a sort of uh, little in insight on the on the in uh, the intellect thing it just bothers me when i see people say this this piece is a god roll when it's not because they're running intellect it's not for pvp yeah maybe but, but i'm not in the business of pvp so i tend not to talk about it in vids because it's pointless you're not here for for that are you you're here for the the, the pve so now i'm trying to save on rockets because i've done a finisher kill on the yoga right but I, I i know that that's just three rockets so i'm going to sort of try and save because i want to my goal is as i said for each encounter to sort of have the encounter done and then and then move with full ammo because i want i want i want plenty of ammo at the boss fight <laughs> So this is, I guess this is just going to be an example of how you can brute force the shields. Because of oppressive darkness, this is not, we'll call it echo of undermining. Because that weakens targets, you can brute force the shield. Plus arc buff for the bow. So combine and those two things, you can take down the shield pretty fast. You just need to know what these wizards do. They hide, obviously, once their shield is broken, they will do their uh, wist, their mist. They might do the mist on you. Luckily, he's not. He's doing the mist on himself, so that's kind of weird. But you can just keep nading behind a pillar, and that'll brute force them shields. And I've saved on a rocket, uh, and, and that was the goal. So now we're full on ammo. Last elevator. See, this run is okay. It, you know, obviously, you know, it could be better and stuff. But the goal of it is really just to show you how to, you know, how to consistently farm it over and over if you want to do that this week to, to get your vanguard um, rep up because obviously there's the shotgun pinnacle to get there's the ornament for that which is linked to a triumph um you know wh whatever whatever your farm needs might be it might be a set of shards it might be farming exotics you might be looking for a better controverse hold a better eye of another world a better phoenix protocol because obviously you can get all that stuff potentially so same thing with the elevator I'm doing the same thing every time I leave with the nade make sure I kill the acolyte to get devoured because you could get sniped on your way to this door so that's why we do the nade and we got our nade back so when we teleport up top for the boss fight um, we're going to use a rocket just because there's two wizards shooting at us which I'm not comfortable with so we'll use at least one rocket uh, and then the other and the other wizard would just primary him down. Which the shield's taken off, so that's good. So that's that taken out. We're good. So that's the exploit. You just go as soon as that wizard's uh, killed, you have maybe five seconds to get behind that gate. And you can do the uh exploit that I'm gonna show you. So this is why it lends itself so well to the Voidwalker because you can just obviously get a lot of grenades. So you, you, you're basically just spamming your grenade, your super, your rockets and stuff. We'll use uh, one rocket here to make the boss immune. So one Nova, one grenade, one galley will make that boss immune for you if you're at power or if you're close to power. Then what we want to do here is take out as many... Um, arc shields and solar shields as we can there's two wizards on this phase so this is the phase where you do need rockets for i uh, i would recommend that you you know you save a rock you save a couple of rockets for the i mean that's why we come up here with max heavy isn't it because once we've done our melt with our super the wizards pretty much spawn out once these are taken there's no more solar shields uh no i don't think no there isn't so it's literally just this. So I used all my heavy because this is where my bow comes in. The wolf tone draw. 
which is a boy you can't get now but as i said there's other weapons available this season to get shooter loot it's more of a common perk becoming so whatever your shooter loot weapon is use it bring it for this it's amazing because this is where i can start to sort of prioritize some bricks because obviously we can't go back down there the way this exploit works is if you do jump down there you won't be able to get back up here because then, then you're going to have to go to your plan B and your plan C. The problem that this uh, cheese or exploit suffers from is ads. They de aggro because they don't know what to do. It's like on the Exodus cheese. It's the same thing. Uh, maybe not as worse though. The frawl and stuff like that will hide. I can see there's a frawl behind that pillar there, I think. Uh, but here's the thing. You can rotate round the map. So on these locations here, you can go right round and you can see different areas of the ad. So look, there's a frawl here. Also, each pillar, if you like, count it as a pillar, has an invisible like ledge that you can uh, stand on like this, which is really good. Also to note for boss AI, if you haven't noticed, the boss will shoot you when unshielded. When shielded, the boss becomes... Um, they 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 de -aggro. The boss won't shoot at you at all. I mean, you, you, it's just you and the ads. Okay, so now we're on the farm phase. Two unstoppable spawn. The barriers. Uh, not the barriers, the arc shields. There's a couple of arc shields. So I'm just going to prioritize one of the unstoppables because I'm not comfortable having two unstoppable ogres shooting at us. Because you can die up here really easy. And on GM, time's up by five. And you can definitely die up here. So it's not just a win-win. you still got to sort of pay attention to your HP and stuff. This is where your wolf tone, you know, your arc, whatever arc weapon you use. And that's why I recommend the arc uh, primary because there's, there's a lot of knights. Also, if you saw that, the, the knights, they do the darkness wall. Barrier weapons can shoot for that if you didn't know. So I just shot right through his darkness. Ideally, you want the knight to do that darkness wall he does where he gets the region because the arc, at the very least, that knight will be fixated and you can just melt the night down we can just look at the damage we're doing because of shield break high energy fire this is what i was going into before yeah on paper my build looks weird because i've got high energy fire and argent ordnance but it's not because the high energy fire is going to help me out in situations with the bow and the argent ordnance is obviously going to help me out when i've got that so it's a win-win for me we use the uh, nova bomb on the ogre because we'll end up getting a Nova back for the, uh, the... You notice how fast we're getting supers because of Ashes to Assets. I think I've doubled up on that for this. I think they stack. They, they used to. So I just put two on. I don't need the Finder so much because um, we were using Loose and fin Finisher, so I didn't go with that. What I'm doing here, though, this is sort of an, uh, an advanced thing. Is I'm st I'm keeping the champ alive on purpose. The reason for that is because ads react differently when champions are alive. They're more likely to be aggroed on you, which is what we want here. Because if you clear both unstoppables, all the ads will just hide at the back of the map. You're gonna be here ages trying to find the ads. Like, look, I'm confrontating with that ogre. What happens? The frawl come out of cover. They're wanting to push me. That won't happen. If you have a lot of Thrall up still, the Knight's up, they're going to all de aggro you because the champ is dead. So try and take out, try and keep at, at least one unstoppable up uh, as much as possible. Notice now, there's no ads hiding for me. I took them all out. So now I'm free to, d to do damage to the boss. The boss is unshielded. I've got no rockets. One little thing I could have done was... Um, do my shoot to loot trick before I killed the unstoppable, but I couldn't I couldn't see a brick at the time, but there is bricks down there. So on this phase you're still getting extra knights. Um you can just technically melt down the boss. I was just um The boss ended up de-aggroing for me, con uh, like right behind the pillars, and then the Boomer Knights were giving me issues. So what I've decided to do was try and look like take out the knights. Because once the knights are taken out, I can start to look for some heavy bricks down there. Because I know there is some. You're going to see as well at the end what happens if you fall down. As in, not into the boss arena, but outside of the boss arena. Is your run failed if you do that? On Grandmaster Solo, is it failed? It isn't. 
I could show you the strats on how to do it. Now, obviously, there's right side, left side. You know, the, the arena is obviously like a dome, like an arena. Well, the right side of it, you can get back up. And on the left-hand side, you can get back up, back up. And on the middle, you can get back up. So, no matter what, you can, unless you're entirely stuck in the wall, which can happen, um, you're good. Because I end up falling down, which you'll see. So, the boss has, con uh, has de aggroed so we need to look on the other side of the map. I've gotten over, I've got three rockets, but here's what I do here. Um, I end up falling down, so I'm sort of stuck on this ledge. I'm sort of floating on it, so it was kind of awkward, and then I fall down. So, this is what you do. I, I'm, I'm sort of glad in a way it happened, but it did slow down the run, so I was kind of annoyed with it. But um, Each side has some sort of place to s stand on, so look, I've got a place here to stand on, so you want to stand there. And then get to one of the archways of the door. And you can jump back up your three. Um, I just end up... I think I end up messing up again. And the boss is entirely uh, de -aggroed. I'm trying to stand on this ledge. That's what I'm trying to do, basically. But the, the ledge works weird. I suppose it's really important to know when you, when you do a GM solo is... There's a particular standing point on the, on the ledge where... Don't go too far forward because then that will then cause you to sort of float and then you can easily fall down. But when we do get to boss damage, I'm just going to use my Nova, I'm going to use my rockets and then be done with it. I'm going to jump off that pillar because I'm getting sort of annoyed with it. I can now see the boss, so I'll just use my Nova and the rockets. That was out of farm this nightfall anyways for double Vanguard rep. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.